Welcome to another lesson of Transparent Physics. This lesson is on distance, position, and displacement from the unit on kinematics, an important introductory topic for anyone who's starting their physics adventure. All right, so the goals for this lesson are almost entirely vocabulary based. We're gonna introduce a lot of new terms. You're gonna understand the difference between distance, position, and displacement. These are important ideas because they help us establish where objects are and where they're going. If we can do that, we can begin to talk about motion in general, and that is a lot of what we're going to focus on with introductory physics. In addition, we're going to introduce the idea between scalar and vector measurements. You're probably already familiar with scalar measurements, even though you don't necessarily know that you are. Vector measurements, I think intuitively makes sense but you sort of have to be introduced to them before you realize that they're kind of out there. Okay, we're going to start off uh, nice and easy with the term distance, but before we get into it, let me uh, decrease the distance between my T and me here for a moment. Ah, that is good. So distance, if you're talking to somebody every day and you mention the word distance, they're going to know what you're referring to. It's the separation between two points, the physical separation between two points. Uh, how wide something is, how tall something is, how far away something is. It's the distance. In physics, when we use measurements, we assign them variables. Variables act as little PO boxes where we can store information. So we don't need to write all the detailed stuff all the time. We can just write the letter instead. In this case, it's a lowercase d. In addition, there are units. Every measurement has a number and a unit associated with it. If we're gonna use the metric system, and we are, then the base SI unit for distance is meters, uh, lowercase m. Now we do wanna watch out that we keep the variable D distinct from the unit M. M is not a variable, it is a unit. And uh, you know we do well to keep all those letters uh, straight from each other. I know sometimes it's a bit of an alphabet soup when students start starting off with physics, but we'll try to be super careful about our notation. Examples of this in action. We could talk about the height of a building as being 154 meters. We could talk about the length of a fish being 33 centimeters. Those provide all the information we need. We understand that when we say the height of the building, we're talking about from its base to its top. And you know, generally speaking, our understanding of distance is, is pretty intuitive. Although sometimes it is not enough, depending on what we actually want to describe. So within that context, sometimes you need more information. Distance is handy, but it doesn't often provide enough information to solve the kind of problems we're going to be solving in physics. For example, Let's say you're blindfolded and spun around in a circle. After they've spun you around in a circle, someone hands you a ball and says, hey, one of your friends is on the field now and uh, she's 12 meters away from you. Armed with just that information, do you know enough to be able to throw the ball and reliably be confident that she'll be able to catch it? No, because just knowing how far away she is doesn't tell you where she is with respect to you. You need additional information. So vectors are an important addition in the introductory physics curriculum. Basically, it's a new class of measurements that require additional information than what often the, the, the common everyday non-science person tends to worry about. So let's review where most people are is they're just interested in measurements that tell them how much of something they have. Uh, stated more mathematically, they are interested in the magnitude of the measurements. Examples of this are mass. Uh, you need 186 grams of the soil. Uh, temperature, it's, I don't know, 200 Kelvin. Time, three minutes have passed. Distance, which we just talked about, um, the, the, they punted the ball 40 meters. These are all examples of measurements where if you know how much of something there is, you know everything you need to know about it. They are known as scalar measurements. We are just interested in the magnitude and that's all. 
However, as the previous slide suggested, sometimes it's not enough to just know the measurement. You need additional information as well. That additional information comes in the form of a direction. And when we put a magnitude and a direction together, we get a, a new class of measurements. Uh, for example, uh, a force is an excellent example of this. If you know how hard you're being pushed, I mean, that's helpful, but it's critical to know in what direction you are being pushed. If someone is pushing you towards the edge of a pool, that's very different than somebody pushing you away from the edge of a pool. Uh, in the context of the discussion we had in the previous slide, it's not just enough to know how far away something is. We often also need to know in what direction is it. That combination of how far it is and in what direction is our next term, position. These measurements that require both a magnitude and a direction are known as vector measurements. And we will be encountering them a lot in introductory physics. So let's talk about position in a little more detail. It is a vector quantity. Uh, being a vector quantity means it has a magnitude and a direction. So in this case, when we are looking at position, we understand that there is a distance, which is the magnitude, and an orientation, which is a direction. Now that orientation can come in a variety of ways. For basic starting physics, we might just be interested in an object that just moves left or right. And uh, in that case, orientation might just be, okay, if I'm starting in the middle, uh, to the right might be positive, uh, to the left might be negative. And it, it could be as simple as that. Uh, sometimes we use north, south, east, west orientations. Uh, sometimes we use angles like 90 degrees or 45 degrees. As we get more experience, we will go into uh, additional examples of how position can be described. For the variable, it, it's still the letter D. Officially, vectors should be written differently than scalars. So textbooks will often make the D a bold letter, which often doesn't show up very cleanly. Uh, except in very sort of controlled environments. Uh, other times we will put a, um, an arrow over the top. Oh, there we are. So we'll put an arrow over the top of the letter. That arrow is an indication that that variable is a vector quantity as well. Now, I will talk about this a, a little bit more later in this video. I tend to just write the letter D for introductory physics uh, concerns. Again, it's not ideal, but I think it's a reasonable simplification given that what we tend to use is a very specific application. And, um, you know, a lot of the introductory vocabulary that we go over right now doesn't necessarily relate to future problems. We're still talking about the same unit, which is uh, meters for distance. And so examples might be a position of a puddle on the sidewalk. So if I am located on a sidewalk and the puddle is six meters in front of me, that might be plus six meters. It's with respect to where I start, six meters away. Um, and a, a more advanced example might be uh, the position of Pittsburgh uh, being 185 kilometers in the southeast direction. But we would need to specify where that, uh, where that comes from. And we could say, hey, you know, from Cleveland, Ohio, starting in Cleveland, Pittsburgh is 185 kilometers. That's the distance. And then the direction is southeast. So you get your distance and orientation. Just like we talked before, though, sometimes even position does not provide you with enough information for the scenario at hand. Um, let, let's, let's revisit uh, something we talked about a little earlier. You're back out in the field. Uh, you're about to throw your Frisbee to a friend. You've got your eye on your friend right now. Frisbee ready to be released. Then somebody puts a blindfold over you, spins you around. Uh, as you're being spun around, your friend sneaks off in a new direction, uh, eight meters away from where she started. Um, you're stopped, you know, you stop spinning. Uh, the friend who was spinning her around says, hey, uh, the friend you were going to throw the Frisbee to is now eight meters away from where she started. Is that enough information to know where to throw the Frisbee? I'm going to argue no. Uh, even though you knew exactly where she started and you know how far she moved, 
you don't know the direction where she moved. So you're still not going to be able to throw her the frisbee accurately. Which brings us to our third and final piece of vocabulary is the idea of displacement, which is a vector quantity. And uh, you can see here my PowerPoint is a little flawed in the idea that there is a, uh, a rogue arrow that I did not animate properly. But uh, that's going to tell you that that's going to be a variable that's going to show up right there. And it is a vector quantity. So remember that arrow indicates uh, a formalistic way of noting that a variable is a vector quantity. We're going to go with some simplified notation as far as our particular discussion goes then. Okay, so displacement is a change in position. Uh, it's, it's not just a specific where are you, it is where did you start versus where did you end. And it includes the distance between your starting and your final position, but it also gives you an understanding of the direction of, of where that distance is moving. Uh, again, uh, the official notation is going to be a delta symbol with either a bold D or a delta with a D with a vector hat over it. Um, I tend not to write it uh, in this full approach right here. Uh, again, because in the context of introductory physics, generally speaking, we talk about position and we talk about distance. but when we're solving problems, we're interested in objects moving. We're, we're interested in where they started versus where they finished. So displacement is going to be almost always the, the terminology that we're going to be interested in. So I generally will just refer to displacement as the letter D. Um, that is, again, a, a slightly sloppy notation, but for introductory physics, uh, it does save us um, an inordinate amount of time throughout the course of a year because displacement is going to be used a ton. But remember, displacement is a change in. And if you're a little more math savvy, you'll recognize the delta symbol, uh, this triangle, as the symbol meaning change. So we're interested in the final position minus the initial position. And uh, we should be able to follow that up with a, a little bit of practice uh, in a future video. Okay, so example, Al walks six meters back to where he started. So he starts, um, let's say over here, and uh, he's going back to where he started. So his displacement is negative six meters. Okay, it includes both the magnitude of the direction that he traveled and the, uh, sorry, the magnitude of the distance that he traveled and the direction as well. Okay, let's put some of this together and let's go on a road trip. So. Uh, we're going to take the drive from Cleveland, Ohio to Pittsburgh, PA. So we're going to start up in Cleveland, drive down to Pittsburgh. And um, if you can see here, we got two lines drawn between those two points. One of them is a straight line that goes directly from Cleveland to Pittsburgh. The other one is a, is a bit more of a snaky line. And that's the actual roads that you could travel on to get from Cleveland to Pittsburgh. There's no super highway that drives straight between them. You're going to have to uh, drive on roads. I mean, unless you got a jetpack or something like that. So if we follow the blue line, the distance you're going to travel is 214 kilometers. That is the actual odometer reading on your car from start to finish. It's going to be 214 kilometers more than what it was before. Now that total distance you travel can be compared to the displacement, which is the red line, uh, and the displacement is 185 kilometers southeast. If we're simply talking about the position where you start and the position where you end, the displacement is 185 kilometers. Uh, sometimes they refer to it as as the crow flies. If you could just go straight from one to the other, that's going to be your displacement. Although realistically, the total distance you travel is going to be more because you can't fly as the crow flies because you're not a crow. I, I don't know. I assume you're not a crow. If you're a crow watching this video, you are an extraordinarily intelligent crow and I salute you. Now, one thing to be cautious of is that position and displacement when you're writing them down are very similar to each other. They're going to have some sort of distance term and they're going to have a direction term, although the position of an object 
is very different than the displacement of an object. So you do want to keep those straight from each other. But again, once we get past this initial stuff, you're mostly going to be just talking about displacements anyway. Okay, quick review of the main ideas of the video then. So we started with the idea of a distance. A distance is a scalar quantity, which means it's magnitude only the separation of two points. So I can say the, the distance between my house and a restaurant is 17 kilometers. And that's it, that's all I need to say. If we need more information, we can start talking about positions. Positions are vectors. Um, a position includes everything that a distance measurement includes, but also upgrades it to include the idea of an orientation. This orientation is some sort of measurement with respect to a reference point often it's just where you start although it doesn't have to be and the notation then of direction or orientation is represented in this particular example by a plus although there are a couple different ways that we could refer to it finally there is displacement also a vector quantity it's the idea of position but recognizing that position can change so we are interested in position a versus position b and when a position changes, there is a certain distance between those two measurements, and then there's a direction between those measurements. So how far away physically is the second position from the first position, uh, and in what direction did that position change? So distance, position, displacement, vector, scalar. Okay, that brings us to the end of the lesson. Do not let this distract you from the physics you're supposed to be doing, but when you're done, if you get a chance, uh, feel free to uh, like, comment, and subscribe on the video. And, uh, you know, hey, physics is great. I understand if you want to express your affection for physics in one of these YouTube acceptable ways. And overall, thank you for watching this lesson from Transparent Physics on distance, position, and displacement. I hope we've made things a little clearer for you.